Good afternoon, everyone. My name uh, is Matteo Orsi. I'm a head of BIM and Digital Design at Morrison Company. Uh, and my presentation today is uh, titled Intelligence from Day One, which is um, an ambition we have in our company uh, with data and with our designs. So something about Morrison Company. We are uh, a fairly young company uh, of 50-plus uh, architects. We are passionate about good design, and we put planet uh, at the center of this, our design, which means we try to uh, are as sustainable as we can in our design and try to deliver nice buildings. So we have a cross-sector approach, so we deliver and design workplaces, uh, educational spaces, uh, uh, housing, and although we are mainly based in London, we have global reach and as well a small arm of our business is in Denmark. So my presentation today will be split in three parts. One is sort of a acknowledging the situation about materials in general and somehow stating the problem. Uh, second part will be about strategic planning, so what we is our value proposition in terms of how do we deliver better quality through materials. And the third one is we'll try to present a quick, uh, give a quick glimpse into implementation, so how we implemented this strategic proposition. So I borrowed, uh, paraphrasing René Magritte, this is not a brick. So uh, for anyone who knows the super famous uh, painting by him, the whole story behind this is it's a representation. And as, as any representation has its, so its limits, which in the architectural world means materials equates 90% of the time to texture, so it's appearance, so it's the look of what we have on a building, which amounts most of the time to wallpaper, and wallpaper is not the material. It's a very, very crude approximation of what we are going to build. And don't get me wrong, appearance is great. We use lots of CGI, we do lots of CGI. Actually, it took me a while to distinguish between the two of them, not joking, because it was something that was so well developed in terms of CGI that it was fairly hard to spot the difference between the built and the CGI. However, this still basically wallpaper. So what are the challenges and what we are trying to overcome here? Most of the time, materials library are CGI-oriented, which is great, but is a fraction, and probably as architects, is not strictly the focus. However, I mean, in my whole career, I've always been told, oh, you are an architect, you're good with colors. That's what the, 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 the line. So people expect that for an architect, it's enough to have a building looking good, which is not the reality. We use a huge software stack it's a common problem across a design practice. We have a massive software stack, which means that each software comes with its own library, which means that CGI, even within the realm of CGI, you can have a CGI output from one software that is not aligned with another one. So it's not so infrequent to have clients or people saying, why you change the, the design? We haven't changed it. Sometimes it's just, you know, a different software that leads to a different outcome. But the most critical aspect is that the lack of intelligence, hence the reason for this presentation being included in the data uh, kind of panel. Because in reality, we do need more than just the appearance. We need intelligence built into our material library. And intelligence can span from, uh, I don't know, Uniclass code, uh, to embody carbon parameters or whatever you see fit. And this is one of the, the example I just uh, listed below, the embodied carbon for us is essential to have at least a rough idea of what is the embodied carbon of our design. 
we cannot wait for stage three and a consultant to give us, oh, this is the embodied carbon, because the decision has already been made. Hence, the effort we are putting in developing a new approach or different approach to have a very early stage intelligence to our model. And last but not least, obviously, having multiple platforms, multiple libraries means lack of consistency. So let's talk about strategic planning, how we approach the problem. We love materiality, we need materiality, but at the same time we acknowledge that we work in a digital world and so the challenge is marry what is analog to what is the digital vision, the digital strategy we have, to give back the designer the same feeling we have. I love so much that feeling of going downstairs in the sample room and feeling the material. It's, it's, there's no substitute to it. However, we can improve greatly what we can do digitally. So, in essence, our strategy is composed by two aspects. One, we all know, is the geometry. Everyone knows about geometry. Basically, most of the time, BIM and beyond BIM is about geometry. So we, are, we move to the digital, what was 2D, which is fine. I have my fantastic BIM model, but it's geometry. There's no more intelligence. What then we focus is about the graphics, the performance, the identity and the appearance that sits within the material. And this time back to the previous presentation, uh, graphics, QA, line style, how the drawing looks. We all love to go paperless. There was, in another stage, an a super interesting presentation about going paperless or paperless production. But still, until that day, we do PDF. It's weird, but we do PDF. So we want those to be aligned. We do want to know performance of those materials, hence intelligence. And I just listed a couple of them, but you can expand this as you wish. Embodied carbon, thermal acoustic, compliance, fire rating, and uh, the whole golden thread is the topic of the day, at least in UK. But then specification, and of course, appearance. So those two ingredients, basically, in our view, in our vision, marry together and basically, this is an extract of our master library. We are just breaking down all these uh, goals into different buckets of information, of data. So we developed uh, what I call one-to-one -one scale texture, multi-channel texture, which means that the brick, uh, although it's not a brick, uh, is the closest representation we can get of it. For anyone who's not that familiar with construction, seems an oddity. But anyone in construction industry knows that, come on, guys, let's avoid cutting bricks. And please, let's have lintel on brick dims. And when you get, get into a coordination stage, a coordination phase, if you, have, you spin your model in 3D and your texture is one-to-one -one scale, you make coordination way much easier because you see that there's something not lining up. It's a simple example just to stress the importance to have accuracy in our design. But also you can, on the data side, let's say, down the icon of the building, you can, through this methodology, you can have tagging standardized. You can have product embedded into your library from day one and not retrofitted. Lots of time we are asked, uh, oh, you guys choose a brick or you agree with the client which is the best brick. By the date, you can build into your model information about CO2, about the su supply chain, whatever, or even specification code. So this is the, what we want to achieve. And I, it might sound controversial, but this leads to what we call digital twin, which is not the model at the end of you know, the whole process, but a model that has intelligence from day one. So like in manufacturing, 
you have something to interrogate. So you can run analysis and you can optioneering from early stages. So which are the requirements? The data, the data, we, the, the data system we, are going to, we need to use needs to be scalable. So I need to grow my library. Whatever the system we use needs to be scalable. Manageable. I love lots of software out there, lots of companies doing an amazing job, but always forgetting that not everyone is so tech savvy. So lots of solutions might be fantastic, but too complex in terms of technology. So as a head of BIM and digital design, I need to keep in mind the team I work with. And scalability and manageability are two key aspects, as well as ownership of data. Again, I would love to work with lots of companies, but then it comes to a cover. If the software sees production, I lose my data. And this is not possible. I cannot afford this. Interoperability. Long software stack means I cannot afford to funnel all my information to a single provider. I will, everyone try to sell me, oh, you go full with my package. I wish I can, but I'm working with X amount of software. I need to move my data from one platform to another. Integration, it, sees, needs, it needs to be easily implemented. So, just to wrap this up, what we've done. We have a recipe which is made by three ingredients. A good data structure, a database system, and some tool to push those data into our models. Data structure seems the silliest thing, but if your data structure, your drive, your server is not structured in a robust way, what is going to happen, the links will fall, fall apart. Hence, no automatization is one of the easiest bit to, fall, uh, to fail in those kind of processes. In our cases, we just adopt a simple, well-known classification system, CIS and SFB, just to break down the materials. It doesn't prevent anyone to change this in the future. As long as uh, the data are properly structured, there's no problem to change to, from one system to another. Database, that's the core of the, uh, the whole system. We work with a CSV database, which is the simplest form of database. It means it's simple, it's customizable, works well with scripting and programming, and personally, I do love low-tech approach in the sense that if tomorrow a workflow is not anymore working for me, I can pick my data, which are sitting in this nice CSV, and migrate to the next platform because I cannot, again, force myself to a single provider, to a single software. I cannot afford, we cannot afford this company. Here's what you see here are the index, the header of this Excel spreadsheet that so far we've been, we, we've been able to implement. So as you can see, and I, unfortunately I can, can't, go, can't go through the technicality of it, through scripting uh, we can drive all of these things and uh, I avoided on purpose to name any software because we tested across multiple platforms and depending on the complexity and the ability of the platform of uh, receive inputs, this can be pushed equally, for instance, to Revit or to SketchUp. So it's neutral. But of course, this is a, you can take it as a wish list that then allows us to drive analysis, CGI, specification, and in general documentation. So I can change, for instance, the hatch pattern for the whole company for the brickwork if standards changes. And just to wrap this up, the tool we've used them, so it's not again to talk about the technicality of it, but the tests we undergo, we undergo are telling us that basically, okay, Ruby is able to accept this approach. Python, which is basically Dynamo, C Sharp, we, we scripted through C Sharp. Then I'm not such a tech guy, so, I like more Dynamo visual scripting, and that's 
an extract from the scripting. And as you can see, all the spaghetti branches you, down there, each one of those branches correspond to a category that we are pushing into the library. So, in essence, this is what, what we are trying to do to bridge this huge gap in order to build in intelligence from day one in our model to get to have better outcomes. And that's it for me. Thank you.